just a few days ago, I did my biggest slur of prints I ever made, including one large print of a picture I took using my phone, the Google Pixel 4e, so I'm really excited to see how this one turned out. But this video is gonna be a full guide on how to print your own shots because it can be quite complicated when starting out. So we're first gonna be talking about why I print my images. You're probably gonna be surprised of the reasons why I print my images. It's probably not what you're thinking of. Then I'm gonna be talking about how I choose which images I put on the wall because it's a pretty important decision and you cannot just put any image you like on the wall. Then we're gonna be talking about how we edit the images because this is very important when you're printing them out and you need to edit them in a certain way. We're then gonna be talking about where I print them. So I use different services over the years. So I have a few ideas about that. And finally, I'm gonna talk about how I put them on the, uh, the walls and which frames I decide to buy. So let's get started by rolling the intro. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm Luke Ben Mahalford, a young photographer and filmmaker on a journey to become better at this art. I brought back my old intro, so do you prefer that one or the newer one I was using in the last few videos? Let me know in the comments down below. So let's talk about first why I decided to print my images. But before talking about that, we need to talk about another thing, is that some people think that it's pretty pretentious of printing your own images and putting them on the walls of your own room, apartment, or house. I totally disagree with this. You could go to Ikea or any other decoration place and buy some very generic pictures to put on your wall and that would be okay, but putting your own images wouldn't be. That's totally crazy. A picture that you buy at Ikea or your own picture that you print is basically the same thing in the end and it's just a picture on the wall. So whether it's you that took it or that's somebody else, I don't see the point of what is the difference inside of it. But there's also better reasons of why I print my images on the wall. So first of all, I think that just like many of the other decorations I have in my apartment, so like the plant I have here, my yellow sofa, or these little birds on the side here, they're all decoration that make my place look better. So that's the first reason of why I print my images. It's because I want to decorate the place and just add a nicer touch throughout my apartment. Another reason why I think printing your images is really great is as a constant reminder of why you like photography. So each time I wake up and I see an image in my room, or I walk around my apartment and see different images, it's always a reminder of why I take pictures in the first place. And this keeps me motivated because I wanna take some even better pictures than the one I have on my wall. And this brings me to the most important reasons of why I print my images now. And just like anybody, a few years ago, my main objective when taking some pictures was to get the most likes possible on Instagram or Facebook. Facebook is a little bit kind of dead, but Instagram still exists. But to be honest, I don't look much anymore who likes my pictures, how many likes I get on Instagram, or all kinds of things like that. I still like sharing my images and seeing that all of you really enjoy them, but it's not the main reason of why I take a picture. Instead, my goal is to take some better pictures than the one I already have on my wall so I can show them to everybody that comes inside of my apartment, inside of my room, or wherever I'm showing them. So this is really something that changed inside of my photography because I'm not trying to get likes anymore. I'm really trying to improve my photography and my motivation is to satisfy myself, not others, when taking some better images. So as long as I really like the images I'm taking and I know that I can print them and put them on my wall, I'm gonna be very satisfied with my images instead of being motivated by the algorithms that can be something harsh. And even if when you take great pictures, sometimes they just don't work out with the algorithm on Instagram or Facebook or wherever you post your images. So I think it's a much better reason to motivate you at taking better pictures. Okay, so I finally got the notification that my package has arrived. So let's go get it and open it up. Okay, so I'm all ready to open this box and for this I'm going to be using some small little scissors. You want to be careful not to use something like a really sharp knife because you don't want to go through and break the images that are inside. Okay, so let's see what's inside of this. So these seem to be all pretty well protected. Okay, so the first images seem to be here. It seems like they've turned out pretty well. Just be really careful when you're handling the images, not to touch them too much because you don't want to be putting the oils of your fingers on them. Okay, so the images are finally right behind here. So the first one here looking pretty good. Okay, so first image here, second one right here, and probably the favorite one right here of my dog. 
another one here that seemed like it came out pretty well because I was scared this would be pure white. But I think they kept a little bit of the grays inside of it, which is pretty good. And finally, this one right here. So yeah, now let's talk about why I chose those images. Okay, so now let's talk about how to choose the right images for your scene. So if you look around here, the first thing that is very important is to choose a picture that complements the colors that are already inside of the room where you're in. So I used to choose just pictures I really like, not necessarily thinking about if they match with the other colors around or the other things I already had inside of my room, but this is actually very important. So if you look around my room right here, we're gonna see there's a lot of yellow. This is the main color that we're using to add some accent color inside of the room, but there's also a lot of brown and there's also the blue with the carpets and also the uh, pillows right here. So if you look at the picture that I chose to go on the wall right behind here, we're gonna see it's a picture of my dog. So first of all, there's a really big sentiment because you know that I really like being with my dog if you watch any of my own videos before. And this is actually the picture from the Google Pixel 4 e So I'm gonna talk about later how it came out. Uh, but what is very important here is if we look at the colors right here, we're gonna see that we have the yellow and orange that matches the same colors that I have inside of the room here with the other yellow around. And then if we look at the background here, we're gonna see there's a lot of green. And this complements the colors where I have inside of my room, my plants and things like that, where there's a lot of uh, the green colors. And then there's also my dog here that is brown that matches with the other pieces of furniture that I have inside of the room. So overall, all the colors inside of this picture match pretty well whatever the colors I have inside of my room. So this is very important to have a picture that doesn't look really weird inside of your room. It's making sure that the picture actually matches the tone of your actual room as you have it right now. Okay, so now let's move on to the second part of my room right here. We're gonna see that I have other pictures on the wall that I already installed. And again, if we look at the colors inside of these pictures, we're gonna see there's a lot of red, orange, and yellow, and this matches the colors like we talked about that are inside of the scene. I also have an orange bowl right here that works nicely with these pictures. But what is very important inside of these two pictures on the wall right here is actually that both of these pictures are very similar in terms of color because they're both side by side. So it's important to make sure that they match together and that the colors work well between these two pictures because if we have very different pictures side by side, uh, it might be a little bit weird and not make something that is very uniform and looks well inside of this scene. But now if you look at uh, the other pictures here, there's another thing that's very important inside of them is that they all have memories for me. So these are all pictures of a trip that I took the second week I arrived here around Seattle. So they all have a certain memory inside of them. So here we had a crazy storm uh, with some clouds coming in on the side of the water. Uh, these were just mountains that were super, super nice and colorful that I never really expected to see here. So they all have something that is special for me and that makes them that when I put them on the wall and if somebody asks me about them, I have something to say about them, which is pretty important because you don't wanna just put pictures that are nice but I don't really have a story behind them. You wanna pick pictures on the wall that when you see them, reminds you something that you enjoyed uh, while you took the picture. Okay, so the next thing we wanna talk about is how to edit the images because this is super important because if you simply send a picture that you took your phone or with your camera and you don't edit it before, you might be disappointed because one thing that is sure is that when you're gonna print your image, first of all, the colors are gonna come out and they're gonna be a little bit darker. And the second thing is also that the colors, usually, at least in my test, tend to be a little bit less vibrant. So it's very important to keep that in mind when you're sending a picture to be able to print it. So I wanted to show you how to do it using your phone. So I was gonna use my Google Pixel 4 e but there's a bug right now with Google Photos and they don't allow me to edit it. But it's not a big deal because you can really use whatever device you have to edit your photos. So I'm gonna be using my iPad right here. But if you have another phone or even if you have like iPhone or anything like that, really any the basic app that has basic editing functions is all you need to be able to edit your photo. So here we're gonna come inside of my photo that I have right here and I'm gonna go inside of edit. The first thing I'm gonna do is just make sure that the picture is straight and that's a little bit cropped in. So I'm just gonna make sure that we keep the same original size right here and make sure that my dog is nice and centered. So this looks pretty good. But what is very important is not cropping the picture is actually going inside of the adjust tab and making sure that everything is a little bit brighter. So we're gonna come into brightness here and we're gonna bring it up quite a lot actually. Just make sure that if you have white parts inside of the image, they don't become a pure white because if they become a pure white, you're not gonna be able to print them afterwards. It's just gonna be white uh, completely. So we're gonna first bring the brightness up probably around like almost 20. So 17 should be okay. 
Then I'm going to contrast and I'm going to bring the contrast quite a lot because I want to make sure that the colors are very separated so it makes it a little bit easier when you print it out. And then the next thing we're going to do is the thing that I didn't say to never do when you edit your pictures and actually bring up the saturation up quite a lot. This is going to ensure that when it prints out, it still keeps the colors and makes sure that they're still nice and vibrant even if you lose some vibrancy and some color. We're also going to see here that by adding vibrancy uh, saturation inside of the picture, uh, we actually have a little bit more contrast that was added and it's not as white as it used to be. So adding these three settings, so adding more brightness, more contrast, and more saturation is going to make sure that when you come out with your picture, you're going to have a better result once it's printed. The second thing we're going to do is actually go inside of Lightroom because for the pictures I have on the wall right here, I did have an edit that was a little bit more complex. And this is because I removed a lot of the distractions inside of the image. So you need to understand that when you're going to print out your image, it's actually going to come out and it's going to be much bigger. So small details that are inside of the image are going to show up a lot more. So if I zoom inside of this shot, and I show the before, so I'm just gonna go here instead of edit, and I show the before, we're gonna see that they had, there was a lot of little things in the background here that were pretty distracting. So I went out and cleaned up the whole background of this image just to make sure that it looks a little bit better. So to do this, you simply go inside of the clone tool here, and I'm gonna see that I have all kinds of points here where I simply remove some different elements inside of the shot, just making it a lot cleaner. So this is make sure is that one, I print it out and put it on a wall. We don't get all these distractions inside of the shot and it's just a much cleaner and nicer looking image in the end. So these are the two easy techniques that I do to make sure that my pictures come out better. Uh, you can pass a lot more time editing your photos, that's not a problem at all. Uh, but these are just the basic things that I do to make sure that my pictures, when they're printed, especially when they're printed in a big format, come out and look nice. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is which photo frames I use and how I put the pictures inside of them. So I use some photo frames from Ikea. They're pretty cheap photo frames. I don't really mind having super high quality ones. I don't think it makes a big difference. But what I really like having inside of my photo frames is actually having a white border around the pictures. That really makes the picture uh, easier to see and just makes it a little bit more nicer and looks a bit more professional. But you can definitely go full frame if you want inside of the frame. That's not a problem at all. Okay, so here we're gonna open the box from Ikea and I should have the photo frames right here. So one thing that's very important is just making sure that you're doing all of this on a surface that won't scratch up the frames in the end. So this is why I am on my bed right now is that I wanna make sure that when I'm gonna be opening up this frame, it won't break in the end. So I'm just gonna get rid of this. So we have the photo frame right here. So usually most photo frames are gonna come and they're gonna have multiple layers of plastic. So be sure not to use a knife or anything that could cut through the frame. The front part of these frames from Ikea are plastic, so they're super, super easy to scratch. So I'm just gonna take this off, remove all the corners right here. And so now we just wanna remove all of these little things around here. I'm gonna remove the back of the frame, put it on the side right here. Now I'm just gonna go get the picture because I actually don't have the picture and I wanna have it ready once I'm gonna remove all the protection from the glass right here. All right, so let's just move this box out of the way and I have my picture right here. Again, we're gonna remove this. We're gonna remove the white border that I was talking about. And then we're gonna come on the glass right here. And these are a little bit tricky. And you remove the little plastic that's in front. So there's plastic on both sides of the fake plexiglass here. So we're just gonna come here, we're gonna put it back down. You can see that I always just touch the sides right here of the plexiglass. I never actually touch in the middle of the glass. So yeah, you need pretty good fingernails to be able to do this. So we're gonna remove this, the white border. Then we're gonna take the image. And usually these images are a little bit larger than the actual size of the hole. That's perfectly fine because you wanna make sure that it goes over the hole here. So I'm gonna place the image, uh, but I actually forgot something else. I'm gonna go get some scotch tape, which is pretty important to make sure that the actual image stays in place. Okay, so I'm back with some masking tape, actually not scotch tape, but you just wanna make sure that you're using a tape that is gonna be able to remove afterwards without breaking the image. You wanna make sure you're not using something um, like uh, some duct tape or something like that, that could break the image when moving it later. So now that we go to have it placed, just remember which side is the top. So I know the top is on this side. So I'm gonna take my piece right here and make sure 
that my little thing here to attach at the top is actually placed in the right direction. And once this is done, we simply come here. We're gonna close all these little things and we're gonna be good to go place the frame on the wall. Okay, so our frame is good and I'm gonna be ready to go put it on the wall over there. So let's go do that. Okay, so now that I've measured everything on the wall, I made sure that it was centered here and it's at the same height as my other photo frames right here. I have a little kit here from Ikea to attach it on the wall. This is what I recommend using if you're gonna be putting them on a wall. You can also buy some on Amazon or wherever you get your things. Uh, but this is just a very simple little system to be able to put it. It creates really small holes, but they're still pretty strong, which is important because I'm in an apartment, so I don't wanna be doing anything to break the walls. Um, but also always check with your landlord if you're allowed to put some frames before doing it. But I got the authorization here to do it, so I'm all good to go. So we're simply gonna put it in right here. And the tricky part is actually getting the actual frame on the wall because you wanna make sure that you align this little thing. So this little thing in the back right here with what the little insulation you put on the wall right here. So I actually got it almost first try. Um, doesn't seem to be super straight, so I might have to move it just a little bit. This is looking all good for me. So that's it. So now we have our frame on the wall and it's looking pretty good. So I have two other frames to go install, so I'm gonna do, do that. And then we're gonna talk about how this print came out uh, from my Google Pixel 4 and how does it compare to the other prints I got using the online service I use to print them. Okay, so before ending this video, I actually wanted to talk about if it's possible to print a picture taken with your phone. So this is a 12 megapixel taken with my Google Pixel 4 and print it in a big format. So this is 20 inches by 30 inches. I'm gonna put the dimensions in centimeters on the screen, but this is actually a pretty big format. And my answer is yes, it's definitely possible, but just be careful. So if you look at the picture right here, very close, we're definitely gonna see that this is a picture coming from a phone because there's detail inside of the fur of my dog and everything that you really see it's over sharpened. It doesn't look really good. But the good news is if you walk away just a few meters, so if I just go up like a meter or two meters or something like that, which is most people when they're gonna be looking around and looking at the image, they're not gonna be directly in front of the image, actually gonna be a little bit more away. From here, I cannot tell the difference at all. I cannot tell this is a picture that was taken by with a phone. So I think that in conclusion, it's definitely possible to be printing some pictures using that we're taking on your phone and printing them in a big format. So this is a good news for everybody that takes pictures using their phone and actually wanna put them on the wall. It's not gonna be the best quality, but it's definitely possible because most people don't look at a picture very close. If we compare this to the other pictures on the other side, we're gonna see that the pictures that come from my DSLR, which is 24 megapixel, are much sharper even when you're really close. Uh, but I think that for most people, it's perfectly fine to print your 12 megapixels even in a big format on the wall. Before wrapping up this video, I wanted to quickly talk about where to print your images because I realized I didn't talk about that and that's actually pretty important. So in the past, I used to go to Costco, but the problem when printing with Costco is actually that if you had anything in an image that was very close to white or very close to complete black, it would just come out completely black or completely white depending on the color. So this is definitely a problem. So this time I used a service that was a little bit more on the pricier side, but it was still super easy. I just submitted the images online and it delivered them to my house just a few days later. And they actually retained pretty much the colors instead of one of the pictures I have on my wall in my room that is pretty tricky because it's very close to being pure white, but it's not totally pure white, uh, but it didn't just make everything white in the end. So it's actually pretty nice. They retained all the details inside of the clouds instead of that photo. So that's definitely a service I can recommend. If you wanna get even better image quality, in that case, you're probably better to go to your local Photoshop. Usually they can have a service to print your pictures. And in this case, they might even offer 
to you do uh, to do a few tests before and you can pay to really make sure that your pictures are coming out as you desire uh, but that's definitely a thing that you have to look out around see the different options that are offered in your area and try and find the best that is for you so you could try different prints from different places and see which one you like the best if you really want to get the best image quality but if you don't really want to think about it too much i can definitely suggest using mpix it was a really great option for the ones that I have on the walls right here. I hope you enjoyed this little video on why and how I print my pictures. I know that the first time I printed my pictures was a little bit intimidating. I wasn't sure what to do, what were the best practices and things like that. And I definitely still have a lot to learn about that. But I hope that this is gonna help a few people understand why you should imprint your images. I think it's a really great thing to have your pictures on the wall and always remind yourself why you're making photography, but also understand how to print them and how to install them and which one to shoot. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know by hitting the like button below and definitely subscribe to the channel for more content on photography and filmmaking. See you in the next one.